So apparently the human body has 206 bones and I broke one of them, only one, and here I am. Going, hi, today we're gonna talk about the facts, like what I really broke, about my muscles that are functioning, the ones that are not, how I walk, uh, and little spoiler, I'm not walking freely, I need some help, but I will talk to you about everything in this video. So let's get started. Little disclaimer, I am, as I already said, not a professional, I will explain everything to you in a very simple way, very straightforward, just so that you can follow and that you can have a general idea about my situation. So, as you may know, the human body has a spine that goes down on your whole back. And uh, the spine contains a lot of bones that we call vertebrae. And they contain the nerves that basically connect the brain to the different muscles. The spine is uh, subdivided into four categories. We have the cervical uh, vertebrae, then the thoracic, yeah, I'm looking on my phone for an input, the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, in the lower back, we have the lumbar vertebrae and then the sacral vertebrae. Okay, that's it. So, um, if and how your muscles work depends on the height of your injury. If you have an injury that's very high up, then you'll probably have none of the muscles uh, study from a very high height not working. In my case, I broke the first lumbar bone, lumbar vertebrae, let's keep it professional. Theoretically, I shouldn't be able to feel or move my legs at all. You, I don't know if you remember, but in my last video I told you that when I was on the floor after I crashed down, I was not able to feel the legs and I was not able to move anything at all. And this is exactly how it should be in this case. Fortunately enough, over the time, some functions and some feelings came back. Obviously, this didn't happen for a long period of time, but in the first weeks, because this is the only uh, period of time where you can get back some functions. Like at this point in time, eight years after my accident, nothing will probably ever come back. And I'm fine at the moment. This is fine. <laughs> During my surgery, the doctors uh, took the different bone fragments of the broken bone, it was the first lumbar one, and tried to put it together. At the same time, they wanted to stabilize my spine by putting together uh, with some metal the broken bone, the second lumbar vertebrae and also the 11th and the 12th thoracic vertebrae. So I will also insert a picture that was taken the day after my accident, so on the 26th of July 2013, and this is how it looked and how it still looks. After the surgery, the doctors told me that I would be able to remove the metal like uh, a year after the surgery. You have to wait for a year because, I mean, the spine needs the support and if you wait too long, then the bones may grow together with the metal. It's a little complicated. I don't really know. It's, it gets just more complicated for the doctors to remove it. So basically a year after the surgery, I went back to the hospital. I talked to the doctors, but they told me, Lisa, you can't have this metal piece removed. And the reason is very simple. It's that your spine needs the support of this metal. Honestly, for me, it's not a big problem because I don't feel it. I don't feel any pain. Um, I don't really feel that there is something in my back. Obviously, like when I uh, try to move, I, I'm maybe not able to turn around all the way like other people, but that's fine. It's not more than this. So I still have this metal inside of me. So let's get to the interesting part, which is... Um, which kind of muscles are working and which ones are not? Am I able to walk? I am able to walk, I am, but I am only able to walk with my crutches and with some other support. Uh, I will show you very soon. So uh, generally, let's say there are three groups of muscles that are working. <laughs> I would tell you about all the muscles that are not working. There are way too many, so let's just talk about the ones that are working. First of all, the muscles that are working are all above my knee, so below my knee there are no muscles working and uh, the feelings I have are not so strong, like I can feel if somebody touches my leg, but I can't tell you what touches me, I can't tell you if it's um, warm or cold and I can't feel pain. And about my feet I can't feel anything at all, so if you step on my foot, I'm not gonna feel it. <laughs> the muscles that are working for me, as I said, are all above my knee. Uh, first of all, we have the front part of my thighs, 
Uh, this muscle is working normally, it's very strong, uh, I can feel everything, it reacts perfectly to my input. I'm very happy with it. The second uh, muscle is on the inner side of my thigh and it is working just like the other one, so perfectly in my eyes. Um, I have this third group of muscles, I say group of muscles because I think that we have uh, some more there and it's um, on the back of my thigh. And these muscles are not so strong, they are actually very weak. I can activate them but it's very hard for me. Like, um, it's, it's basically like the connection from the brain to these muscles is not really 100% there, not like with the other two groups of muscles. It still gives me support while walking and I'm very grateful that they do work and that there is some input because it means that I can still get some improvements out of it. Okay, maybe you have seen people that have missing limbs and they can still walk. You know, when they have, for example, an injury and a uh, leg is cut from them, they get this mechanical leg and they are still able to walk normally. So you may think, okay, Lisa, but you have the muscles above your uh, knee that are working. Why can't you walk without any support, without the crutches? And this is because I don't have enough muscles working. There are two other groups. Uh, one of them are actually the outer um, <laughs> muscles. They're not working. And now the most important muscles, which if I am not wrong, these are even the biggest muscles of the human body, is the gluteus, which is basically the butt. <laughs> it's a very huge muscle that gives a lot of support while walking, so that you can stay upright, that you have the equ equilibrium and a lot more. Honestly, I can't tell you a lot about it because it's not working in my case, so... I don't really know everything about it. I can just tell you that, obviously, I would like to have this muscle working. Just for the butt and to get all the other um, benefits I can get from it. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. There were some people telling me, yeah, Lisa, but go to the gym and train it. How? It's like when you have a light, you turn it on, the light goes on. You turn it off, the light goes off. But what if you cut the cable? If you turn it on, the light is not going on. And this is like the same for me. My nerves were cut and so the input from the brain doesn't go to the muscle and this is just strange because I'm just here and I'm like, like I want to activate the muscle but it just it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not reacting to my input unfortunately. So I don't really have it and it is not here to help me walking because I think, I'm not sure about it, but if I had this muscle and the outer muscles of my upper leg working then I should probably be able to walk way better than I am at the moment. So, in general, not having muscles working is not only a problem for like the movement, but also an optical problem. And I will show you this, because obviously when you don't have the muscles, you don't have a very defined body. Because imagine people that go to the gym, they have this beautiful body full of muscles everywhere, and if you don't have the muscles, if you can't train them, because the connection from the brain to the muscle is basically gone, then there's not, not much you can do. Obviously, you can, could get um, <laughs> plastic surgery, but do we want that? I don't think so. One of the biggest problems I had was like how I looked, because after my accident, I had nice legs, I didn't have like this beautiful, nice butt, and I'm also not able to train it, to get it back. There's nothing I can really do. And in general, finding like clothes that fit me, that I like to wear, where I feel comfortable in, that's so, so hard for me. And now I will show you what I'm talking about. So, basically, as you can see, I don't really have like a butt or anything else, just for a simple reason that the muscles are not working. They're just not here. They're not doing anything at all for me. And uh, the same thing is... Here you can see on both sides I have little holes. Like this is where the missing muscle would be. The one that allows me to uh, move my leg outwards. It's simply not there and therefore I have this hole. You may think, okay Elizabeth, maybe you have a little bit of a belly and um, 
this is the reason but let me tell you no this is not the case because back in 2018 i trained so much and i had no belly i had just beautiful muscles actually uh, around my belly area uh, and i was very very happy with it and i still had these two holes so this has nothing to do with it and uh, generally below my knee as you can see my legs are very 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 thin obviously because of the missing muscles and my my feet yeah they look huge i know they look huge but they are not trust me they're only a size 38 which is pretty normal they just look huge because of my legs because they're so small okay so the muscles that are working for me they allow me to walk with help but i can't stand like i don't have any kind of equilibrium which is very negative let me show you something this is my crutch when I want my crutch to stand upright on its own. It doesn't. It simply doesn't. It stays there maybe for one second and then it falls to one or the other side. And the same, the exact same happens to me. Okay. <laughs> so let me show you how I walk. Basically, uh, when I'm walking, I need the crutches because of the uh, equilibrium, because otherwise I don't have any. When I'm walking, besides not having equilibrium, and besides needing crutches, I need another type of support, because obviously not having any muscles working below my knee means that I can't lift my feet. And imagine walking without lifting the feet, that's a little impossible. The problem is that when I do, then I tend to fall over my own feet because I can't lift them, you know, they're just hanging there. Uh, <laughs> so there are two possibilities. Either I really raise my uh, knees very high with every step, uh, which is not very good, or I take another kind of support, which are called leg braces. If I'm not wrong, because I mean, I never heard the English term, but they're basically these here, okay? So what is this? It's actually pretty cute. Um, they are very hard. They are made of, out of like uh, plastic, something like that. And they gave, give me the support that I need. Because basically, when I walk, then my feet are just like this. I can't really, you know, lift them, as I said. And so I basically wear these here. And as you can see, when I put them on, obviously I also need to wear some shoes. They keep my feet in the same position, always. And they support my ankles and everything else I have here. And basically, when I'm wearing these, I can walk so, so easily. Like, they help me a lot. Obviously, I'm not wearing them like this. I'm wearing uh, pants over them. And uh, if I can be honest, they give me so many problems. Because the pants, they like have to be... Uh, I'm very thin, obviously, not having the muscles. So I want to have uh, skinny jeans, skinny stuff. But I can't because I have these leg braces, so I still need something that's a little wider and it's so hard. And I always have to um, have to look that the pants in general are long enough to hide the foot braces and it's very complicated. I have so many complexes because of these. But hey, what do you want to do? They help me a lot. <laughs> Wait, let me show you. Let me just put on these and then I can show you. Uh, in general, when I buy shoes, what I have to look for is that, first of all, I can remove the part that's inside of the shoe, you know, like the sole. The sole of the shoe, yeah, sure. <laughs> Wait. The insole. Insole, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I always have to buy the shoes in one or two sizes bigger. For the simple fact that these leg braces, like they, um, yeah, obviously they need space too. And in general, not feeling my feet is sort of a problem because I don't know, hey, uh, are these shoes maybe too tight for me or not? Uh, are they hurting me somewhere and I can't feel it? Which is a very, very big problem. Because uh, if I hurt myself, then, which I did in the past, <laughs> I did it because of shoes because they were, I think, too small or something like that. Uh, when I hurt myself, then my body gets hurt. But as I can't feel the pain, my body doesn't really know, okay, I'm hurt there, you know? And so the healing process takes so much longer. It's horrible. <laughs> 
it's horrible. So I have to pay so much attention to all the parts of my body that I can't really feel. And another thing is, obviously I can't feel the cold and being from where I am, where the winters are very cold, I have another problem, like I used to go out sometimes at night and uh, it was very cold, so when I came back home, obviously I wasn't able to feel the cold in my feet, but I was not able to sleep for the whole night because somehow I felt that like the cold went up my legs, into my body. I imagine how cold it was. So now it is. I don't go out anymore. <laughs> I'm just staying at home. It's so much easier for me. I want to show you now how I walk with these. Uh, I actually walk way better, but if I can be honest, uh, it's a little hard to show you here. Maybe in the future, in some vlogs, you will see it a little bit better how I walk in general. Because it's just, it's very hard to show you in this video here in the house. You know, the space is small and it's probably not the best place to be at the moment. Okay, when I'm walking with my leg braces, then I don't need all the strength in my arms. Like, uh, my legs are working a lot more in this case and my arms in general, they don't have to do all this hard work. Uh, I hope that nobody in Batarang saw how I'm walking because this is horrible. <laughs> First of all, because of Covid, I'm not really leaving the house and doing stuff. And second of all, I have um, a lot of issues with my back, a lot of pain, so I'm not really active. And so my walking in general got so bad. And um, like when I was in Batarang, there was this one therapy that was called Gangschulung. So basically at the Gangschulung, uh, the, you have different therapists, they know your condition and they try to uh, help you walking the most normal possible. You know, they give you all the help you need and they show you how you have to walk, what you have to pay attention to, like for example, uh, <laughs> I know that I am uh, moving way too much, like my hips and stuff like that, they should be very firm and not move like up and down stuff like that it's just very hard especially with the pain i have to, at the moment um so yeah anyway you will see more of this in the future okay because i will for sure do some vlogs where i will show you about this and i'm not only walking uh since 2019 i had a little problem back then i uh, had to use the wheelchair very often as well i have one <laughs> one i got back in 2013 so it's a little old still working very fine <laughs> and um i have to use it uh especially if i you know have to travel longer distances or if i know okay for example today i will visit a city i will be on the go the whole time so I like to use the wheelchair, like uh, when I was in Dubai with my friends, I had it when I was in Vienna to visit my friends, I had one um, in general. And a vlog is coming very soon, I will also have it there, I'm pretty sure about it, with the pain I have at the moment, yeah. <laughs> so this is basically it. The bone itself uh, grew together very well. I still have the metal inside of me, the muscles that are working are the ones I told you about and there is not really more working. Obviously I could improve my walking by walking a little bit more frequently, by um, training my core and obviously also my legs, but I'm honestly not really doing it at the moment because of the pain I have and I'm obviously planning on doing it again in the future. <laughs> I need it. I need it, I want it, I, it gives me peace of mind and it just helps me to have a better life quality in general. So I hope to see this not too long. Yeah, this is it. The insight to my life. <laughs> Welcome to my life. I think this video was the hardest one to put online. Wow Lisa, you have three videos <laughs> and one is just an introduction. <laughs> No, but in general, I'm very insecure about myself, about my body. Let's say I have always been insecure, even before my accident. Obviously, after the accident, it got even worse. But now I'm actually pretty happy with where I am, who I am, stuff like that. And I just want to share it to you, because maybe sometimes people see me and they can't really understand why 
things are like they are, so I just want to tell you. Before I end this video, I just wanted to tell you something else. Um, this is something very brief and you may not understand anything at all, I didn't um, either. But maybe some of you want to get like just this last little input, which is the extent of the spinal cord injury is defined by the American Spinal Injury Association, also called ASIA. And they basically have five categories, which are A, B, C, D, E. And they tell you if you have like, um, if, you sp if your spinal cord injury is complete, incomplete or normal. Let's say A means uh, complete, B to D is incomplete and E is normal. In my case it's A so it's the worst one, which means, let me read from here, uh, A is A means complete, no sensory or motor functions is preserved in sacral segments S4 to S5. Yeah, this is just <laughs> to end this. Okay, so this is the end of this video. As you can see, the lighting is <laughs> completely different than in the beginning of the video, simply because uh, I'm here since hours recording this. I don't know what to say, how to say it <laughs> in general. Um, I, I just feel a little lost but uh, I will show you and give you so many more insights in vlogs. I think that's like the best way of taking you with me, of showing you my physical condition. So thank you so much for being here, for watching this video and I hope to see you very soon again. Bye bye!